In today's video we shall discuss about ecosystem and its functions. But before that do subscribe to my channel and let me know your opinions and suggestions in the comment box. How do we define an ecosystem? An ecosystem is a system consisting of biotic and abiotic components that function together as a unit. The biotic components include all the living things whereas the abiotic components are the non-living things. Thus, an ecosystem is an ecological community consisting of different populations of organisms that live together in a particular habitat. So what are the functions of an ecosystem? The functional attributes of the ecosystem keep the components running together. Ecosystem functions are natural processes or exchange of energy that takes place in various plant and animal communities of different biomes of the world. It can be studied under the following three heads. Energy flow, nutrient cycling and ecological succession. Energy flow. Energy is the basic force responsible for all metabolic activities. The flow of energy from producer to top consumers is called unidirectional energy flow. The study of trophic level interaction in an ecosystem gives an idea about the energy flow through the ecosystem. Trophic level interaction deals with how the members of an ecosystem are connected based on nutritional needs. Following trophic levels can be identified in a food chain. Autotrophs, they are the producers of food for all other organisms of the ecosystem. They are largely green plants and convert inorganic material in the presence of solar energy by the process of photosynthesis into chemical energy. Herbivores The animals which eat the plants directly are called primary consumers or herbivores for example insects, birds, rodents, and ruminants. Carnivores They are secondary consumers if they feed on herbivores and tertiary consumers if they use carnivores as their food for example frog, dog, cat, and tiger. Omnivores. Animals that eat both plant and animals for example pig, bear and man. Decomposers. They take care of the dead remains of organisms at each trophic level and help in recycling the nutrients for example, bacteria and fungi. Energy flows through the trophic levels from producers to subsequent trophic levels. This energy always flows from lower to higher trophic level. It never flows in the reverse direction that is from carnivores to herbivores to producers. There is a loss of some energy in the form of unusable heat at each trophic level so that energy level decreases from the first trophic level upwards. The trophic level interaction involves three concepts namely food chain, food web and ecological pyramid. Food chain Transfer of food energy from green plants through a series of organisms with repeated eating and being eaten is called a food chain. For example, grasses are eaten by grasshopper. Grasshopper is eaten by frog. The snake eats the frog and finally snake is eaten by a hawk or eagle. Food web. Trophic levels in an ecosystem are not linear rather they are interconnected and make a food web. Thus, the food web is a network interconnected food chains existing in an ecosystem. One animal may be a member of several different food chains. Food webs are more realistic models of energy flow through an ecosystem. Ecological pyramid. Ecological pyramids are the graphic representations of trophic levels in an ecosystem. They are pyramidal and they are of three types. The producers make the base of the pyramid and the subsequent tiers of the pyramid represent herbivore, carnivore, and top carnivore levels. The ecological pyramids are of three categories. Pyramid of numbers, this represents the number of organisms at each trophic level. Pyramid of biomass, this represents the total standing crop biomass at each trophic level. Standing crop biomass is the amount of the living matter at any given time. It is expressed as gram per unit area or kilocalorie per unit area. Pyramid of energy or productivity, this pyramid represents the total amount of energy at each trophic level. Energy is expressed in terms of rate such as kilocalorie per unit area or unit time or calorie per unit area per unit time. 
For example, in a lake autotroph energy is 20,810 kcal per meter per year. Energy pyramids are never inverted. Nutrient cycling, biogeochemical cycles. The ways in which an element or compound such as water moves between its various living and non-living forms and locations in the biosphere is called a biogeochemical cycle. Biogeochemical cycles important to living organisms include the water, carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus cycles. The water cycle. The water cycle is driven by the sun's energy. The sun warms the ocean surface and other surface water, causing liquid water to evaporate and ice to sublime turn directly from a solid to a gas. These sun-driven processes move water into the atmosphere in the form of water vapor. Over time, water vapor in the atmosphere condenses into clouds and eventually falls as precipitation, rain or snow. When precipitation reaches Earth's surface, it has a few options, it may evaporate again, flow over the surface, or percolate and sink down into the ground. The hydrologic cycle is important because it is how water reaches plants, animals and us. Besides providing people, animals and plants with water, it also moves things like nutrients, pathogens and sediment in and out of aquatic ecosystems. The carbon cycle. Carbon cycle is the process where carbon compounds are interchanged among the biosphere, geosphere, hydrosphere, and atmosphere of the Earth. Following are the major steps involved in the process of the carbon cycle. Carbon present in the atmosphere is absorbed by plants for photosynthesis. These plants are then consumed by animals and carbon gets bioaccumulated into their bodies. These animals and plants eventually die, and upon decomposing, carbon is released back into the atmosphere. Some of the carbon that is not released back into the atmosphere eventually become fossil fuels. These fossil fuels are then used for man-made activities, which pumps more carbon back into the atmosphere. The carbon cycle is vital to life on Earth. Nature tends to keep carbon levels balanced, meaning that the amount of carbon naturally released from reservoirs is equal to the amount that is naturally absorbed by reservoirs. Maintaining this carbon balance allows the planet to remain hospitable for life. The nitrogen cycle. Fixation. Fixation is the first step in the process of making nitrogen usable by plants. Here bacteria change nitrogen into ammonium. Nitrification. This is the process by which ammonium gets changed into nitrates by bacteria. Nitrates are what the plants can then absorb. Assimilation. This is how plants get nitrogen. They absorb nitrates from the soil into their roots. Then the nitrogen gets used in amino acids, nucleic acids, and chlorophyll. Ammonification. This is part of the decaying process. When a plant or animal dies, decomposers like fungi and bacteria turn the nitrogen back into ammonium so it can re-enter the nitrogen cycle. Denitrification. Extra nitrogen in the soil gets put back out into the air. There are special bacteria that perform this task as well. Nitrogen cycle helps in converting inert nitrogen gas into a usable form for the plants through the biochemical process. In the process of ammonification, the bacteria help in decomposing the animal and plant matter, which indirectly helps to clean up the environment. The phosphorus cycle. Phosphorus moves in a cycle through rocks, water, soil and sediments and organisms. Over time, rain and weathering cause rocks to release phosphate ions and other minerals. This inorganic phosphate is then distributed in soils and water. Plants take up inorganic phosphate from the soil. The plants may then be consumed by animals. Once in the plant or animal, the phosphate is incorporated into organic molecules such as DNA. When the plant or animal dies, it decays, and the organic phosphate is returned to the soil. Within the soil, organic forms of phosphate can be made available to plants by bacteria that break down organic matter to inorganic forms of phosphorus. This process is known as mineralization. Phosphorus in soil can end up in waterways and eventually oceans. Once there, it can be incorporated into sediments over time. The phosphorus cycle matters because phosphorus is an essential nutrient for sustaining life on Earth, 
or it plays a central role in the transfer of energy within organisms, the structure of the genetic material, and in the composition of cell membranes, bones and teeth. Ecological Succession or Ecosystem Development Ecological succession, the process by which the structure of a biological community evolves over time. Two different types of succession. Primary and secondary. Primary succession occurs in essentially lifeless areas or regions in which the soil is incapable of sustaining life as a result of such factors as lava flows, newly formed sand dunes, or rocks left from a retreating glacier. Secondary succession occurs in areas where a community that previously existed has been removed, it is typified by small-scale disturbances that do not eliminate all life and nutrients from the environment. Now, before concluding, there is a question that remains. Is nature conservation necessary? The answer is yes. Habitats are in a constant state of change through naturally occurring dynamics and human influence. Our lives as human beings started on this planet Earth and since then we are exhausting its resources. But, in return, we are exposing it to the external threats of destruction and mistreatment. Due to this, beautiful forests have been destroyed, rivers have been polluted and vast open lands have been consumed for buildings and factories. We are giving challenges to nature by doing activities as hunting down animals, cutting down trees, releasing poisonous gases and polluting rivers. But while natural change can be managed by the Earth's ecosystems, that which is imposed by humans often has devastating or irreversible effects on the environment. Conservation of resources has a significant role in protecting our Earth. The natural beauty of the Earth can be maintained via preserving several components of nature including water, air, soil, energy, vegetation, minerals, fauna, etc. Therefore, it is necessary to come together and participate to protect, conserve, and sustainably manage our resources. Resources that we rely upon each day are supplied by the Earth and are limited. Always remember that there is no planet B.